the basic concept there is let's say my finger is the valve stem you know the top of my index finger is the valve stem uh, and then this uh, my, my um, thumb on the top here is going to be the shim and then my index finger on my left hand which I'm moving right now is going to be the rocker arm so if you are going to be measuring that the clearance between the rocker arm and the shim is a little bit too uh, too large you're going to need to put in a thicker shim you know to take up that space right if the clearance is going to be too tight you're going to need to put in a, a thinner shim so that's basically all you're doing again to, just adjusting the lash on the valve to make sure it's properly opening and closing um, with each uh, stroke and rotation of the of the camshaft so with that I'm going to put my uh, cylinder one uh, so that the cam lobes are pointing up approximately those of you being on older cars older being pre facelift if you can see right below the bolt there there's like a plastic looking grate I would highly suggest that if you need to adjust the valve that you plug that because on the on the preface lift car you will not have that rubber uh, or plastic um, galley cover and if you drop the shim guess where it's going so put paper towel in there put I don't know shop rags in there whatever you want to do but make sure that that is covered if you're going to be adjusting because sometimes you know even if you've done the valve adjustments a couple times uh, using that dang tool uh, the magnetic tool sometimes those things fall off either taking all out the old one or putting in a new one so uh, just be mindful of that you do want to make sure that your spark plugs are out just so that you're not fighting uh, fighting compression and rotating the engine Okay, you can do this out of order if you're writing things down, you know, if you see that, hey, cylinder number five is, uh, uh, the lobes are pointing up, I'll do that one first, you know, like, go ahead and, and do that, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. So I'm going to do intake side on one, intake has to be between seven and nine thousandths, so I'm going to take my seven and nine, pull them out. Those are seven, eight, and nine. I guess I'll be using. I'm gonna see if intake on cylinder number one is. Uh, if seven fits too loosely, I'm gonna see if nine is uh, too snug. You know, so that means that it's kind of in the middle where eight should be. So I'm just gonna start with a seven. So the way that I do it is I'm actually going right under the lobe. Put in a seven here, fits. Let's see, put in an eight. The eight should still slide in there. Great. And then the nine should uh, be really tight and or not fit. The nine doesn't fit, so great. So both of these are basically at uh, 0 0.203 millimeters eight thousandths of an inch so to quickly show where I'm putting in the feeler gauge just in case it is uh, not super clear so I'm um, sliding it I'm not sliding I'm not scraping the lobe but I'm scraping kind of going right down the lobe and f putting it in I'm touching basically the top of the feeler gauge is touching uh, the bottom of the the cam lobe and then it slides in right there above the rocker arm okay so hopefully that's clear that's the measurement that uh, that you're making so that's the feeler gauge measurement that you're making but if you need to actually change the the shim the shim sits underneath the rocker arm um, over there so I'll try to find a valve hopefully I have one that I need to adjust if I don't I don't but I'll try to at least uh, kind of show this quick note on the on the on the caliper the digital caliper uh, so my battery ran out so I went ahead and, and bought the battery to save you time uh, I got the Duracell 76A uh, the standard size for uh, battery for this caliper is an LR44 Let's see if I can zoom in on this LR44 
uh, for for Duracell it's an A76 size and for some other brand it might be a PX76A but if you look for LR44 uh, you should be able to find them online pretty quickly so after running through all the measurements it looks like I have to make actually eight adjustments on the exhaust side and three on the intake So on the exhaust side I have to do uh, cylinder one so I'm just going to show that as a demonstration of uh, kind of the process so there is this retainer clip that needs to be removed uh, that retainer clip basically ensures that the rocker arm doesn't slide back and forth uh, because to do the procedure we will need to slide out the rocker arm to actually take out uh, the shim looking kind of between between the cam and the wall of the head you can see there's a shaft there that's the shaft on which the, the rocker arms sit so some guys have trouble actually once they remove the retaining clip sliding the the rocker arm uh, back and forth just because there's a lot of grime and you know caked on oil and whatever else on there preventing it so then you know then you take out the, the blowtorch and just, you know screwdrivers and scrape things hopefully I don't have to do that we start by removing this retainer clip you kind of pull it up it kind of looks like this the bottom of it hooks on to uh, that shaft on which the rocker arm sit it does go in uh, one way it's it is directional but you'll be able to figure it out so on the exhaust side it'll sit like this on the intake side it'll, it'll sit uh, you know the opposite way what I need to do next is I actually need to take out the the shim that's in there and measure it and then that will tell me you know the difference between our, where I want to be which is uh, 12 thousandths the clearance that I had was uh, 14 thousandths the difference the 0 0.05 millimeter or the difference between uh, 14 thousandths so the difference between 14 thousandths and 12 thousandths which is about 0 0.05 millimeters will be additional shim thickness that I will need to add to the one that's in there and I'm not actually going to be adding additional thickness to the shim I'm basically going to take a shim a thicker shim that uh, gets me to that ballpark range so sliding the rocker, rocker arm is usually uh, pretty straightforward you, know, you can try to do it from the shaft side oh, mine is sliding very easily at least this one is so that is the rocker arm that's moved off. Now I'm going to take that magnetic tool, which is this guy, and just uh, pick it up. Picking it up is uh, a lot easier, so you just pull kind of straight up. Sometimes it doesn't want to come out, which looks like is the case with this one, so you kind of try to clip it a few times and then it just pops up onto it so now I'm gonna measure the thickness of this shim this one looks like it's a 2.24 shim so I'm gonna go put it into my spreadsheet so before I move forward I take my uh, my kit with all of the shims and I find where the 2.24 shim would live and I would add it to this bucket so that's gonna go in there
This might not come out well and I apologize I'm recording my screen with my camera but this is kind of the spreadsheet. This was shared by someone on the m 3 forumnet before it went down but a long time ago. This is kind of how I track uh, what measurements I make and what shims I put in. So just to quickly run through it. So this starts with cylinder 1 through 6, you know, front and rear. Uh, the clearance measured, this is basically what you would fill in from your feeler gauge. The shim thickness that you measured to the extent that you, uh, you feel like it's, uh, it's out of range. So these are in, in millimeters. If you want to do it in, uh, in inches, you can convert it. So shim thickness, and then it tells you what the required shim thickness is based on what feeler gauge fits in plus what uh, shim thickness came out. It comes out with a difference and tells you what the shim uh, required shim is. And then you start going down the list and saying, okay, well, let's say, let's go to this one. This one is a good example. So this one says, okay, the required shim, th uh, shim thickness is 2.3015. Well, if you look at the kit, and this is the same, uh, I would say, problem with the uh, actual BMW kit, um, this is in reverse, but bear with me. So you can see that the sizes go from 228 to 232. Uh, I looked on the real OEM also and you can't really buy, there's no part number to, to buy a 2.30, let's say shim. So then you kind of have to make a call of whether to go with a 228 shim and have a little bit more of a clearance left there or to go with a tighter shim or a bigger shim with a 232 and have a smaller clearance. So I actually try both. Uh, the most common sizes that I'm using, so on the exhaust size, the most common sizes are around 2.3 but they vary between like 2.26 and 2.32. On the intake side, it's actually pretty similar. Uh, it's 2. Point, there's one that was required that was 2.25, one that was around 2.3, and one was around 2.34. So you end up using basically the same sizes, right? Just because this kit comes with 92, 96, 172, you never really use those. You really end up using the ones that are 2.36, 2.32, 2.28, and 2.24. Now the spreadsheet tells me that I need a 2.29 shim. Uh, so what I have is a 2.28 or 2.32. Uh, so the technique is to kind of uh, put it down into it and then slide this thing off. So the shim is on the tool. Now I'm gonna go and try to uh, get it on there. The camera might have to move out of the way, I apologize. Just to make some room because it is pretty tight here. Okay, so I got it in there. Now the trick is to uh, get the rocker arm on there without knocking out the shim. So to, to do that the rocker arm is basically going to be fitting in between the shim and the cam lobe so I want to bring the rocker arm upward a little bit so it's touching the cam then I'm going to slide it on and then uh, kind of drop it onto the shim. It's a, it's a little bit of a, of a balancing act. So again I can't really capture this on uh, camera just because it is so tight in there. And I do want to make sure that the, the shim is seated still. As I do this, sometimes it catches the corner of it and knocks it out, so a couple of things that could, uh, could happen. And one thing that I also like to do after making the adjustment, the, the retainer clip can be off. But what I want to do is I want to go back to my feeler gauges and then just make sure that the shim that I put in actually places it back into the range that I needed to. You do want to recheck it yourself, right, just to make sure that you didn't go in the wrong direction. So let's say your shim was... Uh, was a certain size and you needed to put a larger shim in to take off some of the space and you actually accidentally you know you mess up which valve you're doing because there are 24 of them and you accidentally put a smaller shim in there and create a bigger gap so you do want to just uh, just double check yourself let me just quickly uh, demonstrate here I don't know what shim size this is 260 okay so just a quick demonstration so this shim size is stamped as 2.60 so this is in millimeters so watch what happens on the caliper depending on how hard I squeeze this thing so right now this is like a 263, 262, 261. So the pressure that you kind of squeeze this with also sort of dictates the reading that will come out, right? Because I can squeeze it really, really hard 
and get it down to like 258, right? Or I can just go like super loose and that will be like a 261, 262 type of a deal. So it's it's hard to get a super accurate reading. Maybe, you know, if you have a higher higher quality digital caliper, you know, you can get it bang on. But there are, you know, there's a little bit of flop, a little bit of a tolerance built into this thing. So if I squeeze it harder again, I can get it to, to 257. So it's a big range, right? If you just need to do like two thousands of a uh, of an inch adjustment, which I do from a 14 feeler gauge to down to 12, like this is a big range. The best way to know whether you have the right the right shim in there is to put one in there and then just recheck with a feeler gauge. If you uh, drop a shim somewhere into uh, the abyss over there, I wish you luck. Uh, but one tool that you uh, absolutely need to have in your arsenal is a magnet with a very very small head so I have one uh, here this guy um, it's powerful but it's uh, it just will not fit into uh, like little crevices down there so I just went out actually and bought this little guy from O'Reilly's once you're done with it you want to just uh, replace the retaining clip so like I said, it is directional, but you'll figure out kind of looking at the others since you're doing one at a time on how to put it on. You just want to kind of push it down onto uh, the rock arm shaft and snap it on and that's it. These retainers, just make sure that they are really on because sometimes what happens is one side will go on the shaft, the other one will kind of actually be um, scrunched over but not really sitting on the shaft because the arms are kind of like uh, loose springs if you will. They have to go around the shaft and grab it. Sometimes, the, you know, they, they come in closer together and go off on one side or the other. And you think that it's on, but it's not, so just tug on it. So I'm just going to do uh, the rest of these. The process is the same. So now that that's all done, I'm going to uh, start putting things back together.